All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna give you guys a few seconds to trickle in and everybody get set up with their audio before we get started. So welcome to Intro to Black Powder and Muzzle Loaders. This is an introductory course designed for basics and beginners. It's brought to you by the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Your lead host tonight is Lonnie Clough. Lonnie has been an instructor with us for in between eight and 10 years. He's been teaching archery. He also does a lot of stuff with the scouts and also reenactments. So welcome Lonnie. And I am gonna be your moderator. I have a few slides to go through. My name is Dawn Anderson and I am the hunter education and archery education coordinator for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. So welcome. Thank you for spending your Thursday evening with us. All right, couple slides I gotta go through first. So thank you for joining the Nevada Department of Wildlife for a conservation education program. This is a family friendly program and it's rated PG. Profanity or inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated in the chat or Q&A. All questions in the chat box or Q&A box should be on topic. Failing to follow these guidelines will result in being muted or completely removed from the Q&A or chat or being removed from the live stream. So tonight, a loose agenda for you. We're gonna cover some rules and regs when it comes to hunting with a muzzleloader rifle or a musket in Nevada. And then I'm gonna hand the reins over to Lonnie, who's gonna do your introduction to black powder and muzzleloader. We're anticipating about 45 minutes. If you have any questions, drop them in the Q&A box and I will get to them or I'll direct them to Lonnie. And then following this webinar, you will receive a link to a survey. We, we strongly encourage you to fill them out, give us your feedback and let us know what you'd like to see more of. I personally like them because I like to know what your guys' takeaways were and maybe some more topics that we can potentially cover for you in the future. So please fill out those surveys. We appreciate them. All right, so I know there's a lot of um, verbiage on here and I'm not gonna read it verbatim. I'm gonna let you guys read them. But so <clears throat> in Nevada, when hunting in Nevada with a muzzleloader, um, with a rifle, a muzzleloader rifle or a musket, um, these follow the NAC 503-142 and the 503-145 codes. They are, can be found in the back of our big game books. Um, a firearm for a muzzle muzzleloader only hunt. A firearm must have a single barrel of 45 caliber or larger. The ignition has to be a wheel lock, match lock, or flint lock ignition system, or a percussion ignition, ignition system that uses a primer or a percussion cap. You have the legal projectiles on there. Only open sites and peep sites are permitted. Scopes are prohibited. A site that is operated or powered by a battery, electronics, or radioactive isotope such as titanium, tritanium is prohibited. Scopes are permitted during an any legal weapon hunt. Now, per NAC 503-146, the department may issue a scope permit to put on a muzzleloader for a person with a visual disability. So applications would be submitted to the Department of Wildlife to obtain one of those permits. Only black powder or a black powder substitute may be used. I think that about covers your rules and recs for hunting in Nevada. And again, just check to make sure if you're planning on muzzle loading um, hunting in another state, just make sure that their rules and you pick their rules and regs first because they're different than ours would be. So just a couple safety things on the bottom there. Always discharge your muzzle loader into, into a suitable backstop. During Hunter Ed, you will hear this question come up multiple times. And always make sure that you're shooting in a legal and safe area. 
And with that, I am going to pass the reins on to Lonnie, who is going to get into the types of muzzleloaders as well as everything black powder and muzzleloader, and I'll let him introduce himself. All right. <laughs> My name is Lonnie Clough. Um, as Don said, I, I, I'm a hunter red instructor. I, my specialties are archery and black powder. The way this came about was when we first had to start doing these, Don had asked for some videos of us instructors doing things. And I and some buddies went shooting. Well, we go black powder shooting. I am a historical reenactor as well. I work with a civil war club. I work with a War of 1846, 1848 Mexican American War group, and I've done some mountain man activities in the past. So I deal a lot with uh, Black Powder. We went shooting, and I sent her a real quick video clip. Hey, this is what you're looking for. And it grew into another video, which you'll get a chance to view. And then it grew into this. So we'll go ahead. Don has up for us the pictures of three different styles of muzzle loader. The one on the, on the left-hand side of your screen is an inline. These are what's currently being used. They look and feel like a modern rifle. However, they use black powder as a propellant. The ones that I use, and they're an actual rifle, they're what's considered uh, a rifle. The center one is your flintlock where it uses flint and steel to create the spark necessary to ignite the powder in the barrel. That's more the style and age that I use. I use specifically percussions and she has a picture of a percussion pistol, which I'll also show here in a few minutes. So, as we all know, the first thing you do about a gun is you always want to make sure it's unloaded before you use it. With a modern rifle, which I'll refer to throughout the presentation as a brass cartridge rifle, the way you check that is you open the, the chamber, the bolt, whatever, okay? On a muzzle loader, that's impossible. And it's never a good idea to ever look down any barrel. So the way we check to make sure a black powder firearm is unloaded is use, is with some of its built-in tools. Don't know if I can get far enough back for you to be able to see this, but this is a 1865 Springfield infantry rifle. My hand here is on the ramrod, which is part of one of the tools used to load this. To see if this rifle is unloaded, you take and you run the ramrod down the barrel. And if you, you can see, you can see the ramrod just barely right there above my finger. It is flush with the end of the muzzle. That tells me there is nothing in that barrel. That barrel is empty. My rifle is unloaded. And it stores on the rifle. You also don't, you keep your, your, your hammer all the way forward. Okay, we'll go through real quick some parts of the rifle. You of course have your, and I'm gonna use something a little smaller. This is a 50 caliber single shot muzzle loading pistol. And it has one unique option to it that's not always found on things. It's called, it has a double trigger, which helps with uh, recoil and some other functions, especially when you're hunting. Okay, so again, I wanna make sure it's unloaded. I'm gonna pull my ramrod. 
and I'm going to run it down my barrel. That's unloaded for this one because I've modified the ramrod. Sometimes they don't like to come out. So you go through the parts of the gun, you've got your stock, your wood piece, you have your barrel, which on this one is released from the stock. This is your barrel. And then this piece here is called your lock. It contains your trigger mechanism. It contains the springs necessary to pull the hammer back. And it reassembles just like that. So, When you're, you, when you're firing a rifle, most rifles come with a safety. This one does as well. This one is called, the safety on this is one click back called half cock. It prevents you from being able to pull the trigger. When you get ready to fire it, you go back to full cock, put your percussion cap on the nipple here, and you can now fire the rifle or the pistol. And this goes with any percussion styled firearm. Your flintlock or your match lock would have a pan, a square pan right here, a little container that you would pour powder on. You would have a piece of flint angling this way and a piece of steel. When you fire, the hammer comes in, hits the, the flint, throwing the spark into the pan. That's how a flintlock works. A match lock would just have a piece of fabric coming out that would be lit and it goes in the hammer. You would blow on it as you pulled the trigger and it would go in to the pan and, it, and burn the powder that way. Now, the other style that we have is, are the revolvers, which Don doesn't have a picture of. And it is set up very similar to my single shot, I still have my stock, still have my barrel, but my lock assembly is different. My lock assembly is through here. And the way I would check this one, I'm gonna drop the hammer, the ramrod, and that goes in a cylinder, but that doesn't tell me if it's unloaded or not. So on this one, you, you pull the, the lock pin out, move your, hammer back to half cock and it wants to be, and you can drop your cylinder out. Now, that's where my nipples will go or my percussion caps will go on my nipples. And I can visually inspect my cylinders now without fear of a possible detonation or possible discharge. That's with that later. So that's how the gun is assembled. That's how you check it for uh, safe storage condition or for firing condition. Another thing you need to know about is, is powder. As Don brought out, you can only use black powder or a black powder substitute. This is the brand that I am currently using for my black powder. And as you notice, the words 3F underneath the words black powder is written on the can. That's important for me to know. There are four different types of powder, four different grades of powder. You have 1F, which is really, really coarse. And that is what most of your cannoneers that I did I deal with on the Civil War, that is what they use in their cannons the, when, they, when they fire. Rifles use 2F or 3F. 
pistols use 3F, hence that's what I've got here. And since I can use both 3F in both rifle and pistol, I only stock 3F. And then 4F, the finest you can get, is what they call pan powder. It's what's used on the flint locks and the match locks. And it only goes in your pan. It burns extremely rapidly, causing your spark to go from your pan into your barrel. Now, some of the, the smokeless varieties These are both made by Hogden. Get the light off of there. One is called Triple Seven. The other one is called Pyrodex. That's based, That's the general name for most of this smokeless powder. We don't use that normally in our reenactments because it produces very little noise and very little smoke. It does produce some and it burns differently than regular black powder. But this is what you'll, you go to most gun stores, this is what you'll find right now for uh, powder. Black powder is becoming hard to acquire. So again, the four grades are 1F, which is really coarse. It's usually considered cannon powder or be used for other um, explosives. 2F is rifle powder. 3F is rifle or pistol powder. 4F is your pan powder. So there's that. Now, talked about powder, she's talked about ball, okay? If I get that up by the camera there. This is a, a, a round lead ball. It's a 45, a 44 cal. It's what I use in my revolver. This one here, and I'll put these up so you can see the difference in size. The bigger one is actually is a 58 caliber ball that is shot out of the rifle. Now, obviously when we're doing reenactments, we're not shooting balls, but these are allowable for hunting. And so those are two of the common styles. Um, I don't have a, a Sabbath or a Manet ball with me right now. They're shaped um, more like you'd see a normal bullet. Those come out toward the end of the Civil War. And again, those are used for hunting. So we call them a Manet ball for reenactments, but a lot of people call them sabots now. So let's see. Any questions so far? Doesn't look like it. Don's not I'm yelling. Not, <laughs> I'm not seeing any questions at the moment, but. Um, what I was going to do, if you give me a quick second, I was going to pull open my Hunter Ed book and show some pictures of the Sabbat and whatnot. So give me okay. a second. We have welcome to Belinda, who just is joining us. If you give me a second, I'll go grab a Sabbat or my one of my Manet balls. Okay, go grab one. That is what the Manet ball looks like that I use in my 58 caliber rifle. You've got a, a rounded tip, but I also have a hollow backside. This is made out of solid lead.
Oh, I'm working on it. Okay. Well, okay. while she's taking up those pictures, um, we can go into, to, you got it? Not yet? Okay. I'm working on it. What I would use, I'm ready, I'm sorry. You I'm ready? working on it. Okay. Tools that I would use to reload my my pistol or my revolvers. First, I'm, I'm gonna need some sort of a powder flask. Here's one style. And this is an actual flat, this is a, a flask that I store the, the powder in here. And this is a measured chart. I know how many grains of powder will store in the tip. So what I'll do is I'll, this will be full of powder. You cover your tip, you press the release button, it fills this cylinder, and obviously you're gonna, you're gonna do it like this, and you move it over the barrel and release it. If it spills, it spills. Black powder it will not hurt the ground. So, let's see what she's got here. Okay. I have... <clears throat> okay, here, I'll show you what I have. And this might help. So I'm gonna use HE tools. This is what we use for Hunter Ed. And can you see that? That was, okay, that's the hammer. All right. You know, as we went through various parts of it, I didn't name them all. So there's your parts of a percussion rifle. And then you have this your locks. Mm -hmm. Notice on the inline, it's a bolt action. It loads through a, not, not having used those, I use uh, traditional. It's designed mm -hmm. a little differently. And then the last thing that I have on here is our black powder. And let me turn it down just because I know this gets a little loud. Okay, so there's your different visuals right there, your round ball mm -hmm. and your sabot and your maxi ball. And they, and, oh. and actually it's like pounding something into the ground if you've got it right. Notice how they push it down. You want it tight, you want it compressed. All right. Okay. What they showed you was an inline firing. Okay. With the percussions, Again, with the percussions, my hammer comes back, my nipple goes here, my percussion cap goes here. This is on the outside. Um, one thing to be aware of is uh, what hand, what eye do you shoot with, your dominance. I'm a right-handed shooter. I'm also right-eye dominant, so this doesn't work. If you're left-handed or left-eye dominant, you're gonna have to shoot backwards because you don't want to shoot across and put that percussion cap right next to your face. It'll burn you. Okay. In the video, they showed you a different style of loading. This is a charged cylinder. I can adjust this piece here to change how much powder goes into the into the cylinder. It, it, like I got some stuck in there. Anyway, it, it goes in there and then you pour it out. So here's my other one. And you can see, to get it open, that it's, recessed in there and I figured out how much grain weight how much powder I want in inside the barrel pour it in there and then this is used to pour it back into the into the pistol 
that's also the advantage of having this spout on the bottle. The spout allows me to cross this way. And you'll see it again in, in a video here. So those are loading tools. The video showed you a ball starter, which you can use when you're shooting single shot pistols or rifles, you always use a patch. And a patch can be, you can go down to the store and buy pre-made patches. It can be a square of cloth like this. These are actually clean cloths that I can use as patches. When I do that, I also use some form of a lubricant in there. Yeah, I've got stuff scattered around me right now. I just use Vaseline. I'll take my patch, wipe it in my jar of Vaseline and run it down. That lubricates um, the patch and the ball going down. And again, using that patch, like it showed in the video, you take your patch, set it on your barrel, and you center your ball in the center of that patch and push it down. And you take your ramrod and you use that to pack the, uh, the ball down. And I do it, as you'll see in the video, I'll do it until I can bounce my ramrod back up out. Then I know it's packed tight. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing any questions. We can show videos when you're ready. Okay. Um, so I've gone through the last thing you do, you, you know, you, you put your ball in, you put your cap on, you bring it to half cock, make sure that when I'm shooting with friends, we let each other know, hey, I'm ready to shoot because it's loud. And then put your hammer all the way back, sight and fire. When I'm with the reenactment, um, it depends on the commands that the uh, officer in charge gives. Sometimes it's load and hold, which we load it, we don't put a cap on it. Sometimes it's load and then command to fire. Sometimes it's fire at will. And again, when we're doing that, we try not to get ahead or behind one of our other teammates because the, the, the percussion, the blast or the ignition of those firearms going off hurts. I wear earplugs and I've had guys two steps behind me set it off and it hurts so bad I about turned around and hit him. So we're either spaced apart so that we can uh, be in a staggered line or we're up against each other, shoulder to shoulder so that we're not hurting each other's ears or taking a chance of throwing smoke in each other's face. So we've gone to cutter, how to load them, supplies that are different from a brass cartridge. Okay, well, Don, why don't you show the, uh, the long video. You got it. I'm working on it right now. So it is, it's uh, a lot of fun. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. Okay. We're here today. I'm going to demonstrate loading a black powder rifle. Um, let's go through some. Okay. I'm just describing my two different firearms. I'm using a wooden dowel for my ramrod in, in the one I'll use because the metal ramrod is missing. In my hand are nipples or what they're called musket caps. That is one form of percussion caps. And then this one I'm showing number 11 percussion caps, which I use on my pistols and revolvers. And I'm showing some of the ball. Those are, again, powder measures. And how I, you know, going through how I 
set those. In this video, we'll use Pyrodex. That's what I see sitting on the table. I believe I'm uh, showing some of the ball. Kind of hard to see what I've got in my hand there. Could be uh, could be caps or uh, patches. So again, I as we've already discussed, I've got two different types of powder there. I've got Pyrodex and I've got black powder. I, that's a different brand. And then these are some of my cleaning tools, which I'll demonstrate after this video. It's wanting to think about it at the moment. I'm seeing that. Well. Can you hear it, Lonnie? I cannot hear anything. That's why I'm doing the, the commentary. Oh, okay. Because we can hear, we can hear it. Okay. Um, right now, what I've got in my finger is a number eleven percussion cap. You can see how tiny it is. They're so small that I don't try to put them on by my hand. I use a capper. There's various styles. The one that I prefer the most is this one. And this is what they call a straight one. I take and I'll load the caps in one end and it pushes them to the front and holds one in these springs. And I just push that up against the gun and pull it away. They make one that's in the shape of a teardrop. Um, and then I've got some that I've custom made out of leather. It's a circle with holes punched in the cap set in. Uh, did our video crash? Our video crashed, and I'm not 100% sure why it just decided it didn't want to share anymore. But let's try it again. Okay, Lonnie, the commentary is going on our end. Okay. Oh, see, it doesn't, something's going wrong. Okay. Like us. All right, we tried. This right here is the musket cap. It's called a four wing musket cap. Notice how much bigger it is in comparison to the number 11. You, you can't put a number 11 cap on a musket nipple, but you can put a musket cap on a number 11 nipple. It's just a little more challenging and you have to pay a lot more attention to what you do. So. Do you want me to show the other video? Um, go ahead. Okay. This is a video of me firing one of my revolvers. I've already loaded it. I've already put uh, percussion uh, number 11 nipples on it. Now you see why she's got, Don's got the volume turned down, but you can tell it, that's quite loud. When it comes to, to loading, since our, my, my loading video won't work. I can go ahead and demonstrate it here. Okay, so uh, I have my, my powder flask here. I know how much this charge is. So I'm gonna cover the front. I'm gonna dispense the powder into the funnel. I'm gonna go across top and I'm gonna let the, the powder run into the barrel, okay? Then, like we've already talked, uh, put stuff away. Always clean up after yourself. Makes it a whole lot easier. Take your patch and you're gonna lay your patch across the top. You're gonna to set your ball in it. And the ball starter would push that down. I'm not gonna go any farther with pushing that in because I wanna be able to take it out. 
you push that down till your rag goes away and you take your, your ramrod and you basically pound that in until your hit your hit your you can bounce. I do it until I can bounce my rod back out at me. Then I know that the, the ball's seated in there and I'm good to put my percussion cap. Again, this one takes a number 11, a tiny one. That goes right on there. That's considered a loaded weapon because I can create a spark. There's enough spark that comes out of that cap that I can burn you at 10 feet away, just the cap. So this is really important that you know where this is, where you're going with that before you ever put this on. And they're designed to fit snug. You don't want them falling off. Then you, of course, aim and fire. Okay, so what do you do when you're done shooting? Well, first of all, you wanna make sure you're empty. How do we check to make sure we're unloaded? Again, you pull your ramrod, you drop it down the barrel. It should level out. If it doesn't, there's something still in here that you gotta be careful of. You might have a ball that didn't fire, if you got a lot of noise going on around you, the percussion cap can discharge without clearing the, the barrel, without blowing the ball out. You won't know that because you can't see it. One of the ways to clear that is compressed air. You put compressed air, you blow it out. Another way is, and it's not recommend, it's, a little more challenging, a little more difficult is you take your, you can take the nipple off and add powder into there and do it. Or they make what's called ball jacks. That's a ball jack. That's designed to go in and, and dig into your lead ball and pull it out. They make another one called a screw, which I don't see in my toolkit right here, but try to avoid those because it looks like a regular screw and all it does is flare your ball out, making it more difficult to pull it out. If you still can't get it out, you know, your ramrod still doesn't sit down like it's flat like it's supposed to. The way you take the powder and make the powder unusable is you pour water through here. Black powder it cannot be gotten wet or it goes bad. Then you can take it down to a gunsmith or if you get a, a trusted friend who's good with firearms, then you take it to them and let them mess with it. Once you get something stuck in here, it can be a bugger to get out. So, We've, we're getting ready to go home. We, we, know, we know our weapons are unloaded, our, our firearms, our pistols, our rifles. We know they're unloaded. We know that they're safe for storage. So we get home, okay? Black powder is corrosive. It is not recommended to let powder sit in the barrel for a long period of time. How do you clean it? Well, you can't, use, you can't clean it like you would a brass cartridge rifle or pistol because you can't get from one end of the barrel to the other. That barrel is plugged on one end. My pistols, what I like to do is I'll take the barrel off. I can take the nipple off. I have what's called a nipple wrench. This is one style. This is another style or you can use a wrench, it fits over. You know, so the nipple has a couple of square edges to it. So your nipple wrench goes over the edge, and you take it off. All 
I like to clean my stuff with hot soapy water. So I will take a coffee can, put it on the stove, fill it half, two thirds of water, pour a bunch of Dawn dish soap in it, let it boil. Then I'll take and I'll stick my, my whole barrel into that can. Let it sit for a couple minutes. And while it's sitting in there, I'm getting my cleaning rods together. Cleaning rod be identical to what you'd use for a modern firearm, for a brass cartridge firearm. Something that allows you to put a rag on the end. So I've, you know, we've got my patch here. Run it to the center of that. Like that. Stick it in the water, get it wet, take my barrel, and with my rod connected, I'll just start going up and down with it until I create a suction and I can pull water up and down the entire length of that barrel. I'm wanting to wash the, the residue out, the, the powder residue out. And I'll do that until it'll come clean, you know. Do it for maybe five or 10 minutes. Then I'll take a, a dry one, run a dry one down. If it just comes out wet, that means I've got everything out. If it comes back out brown or black, that means I still have uh, powder residue in there. Something new that I've started playing with is it's there a, a cleaning patch designed specifically for muzzle loaders. This one is manufactured by Thompson Contender and it comes pre, uh, pre-saturated. This is what they look like. They just round white cloth. They come pre-saturated with a bore cleaner, which aids in, in dissolving the powdered residue that's left in the barrel from shooting. Once your patches start coming out clean, you wanna dry that as best you can. Cotton works great. You wanna dry it because if you leave water in that barrel, it will rust. When, once you've got it clean and dry, let's see, what, do I, what I'll do is I'll take a mop. That's what I like to call them. I'm not sure if that's their real name. But I'll take a mop like this. And all it is is a bunch of fabric around it. Around it. I'll soak it with a, whatever I want to put in the barrel. Uh, you can use gun oil, um, a light oil of any kind, actually. And you run that back and down the barrel a couple of times. That coats the inside of the barrel to help prevent the rust in the barrel. And then you put it away. And then you're done. You, know, you put your guns away and you're done until the next time you want to go shoot. So. All right, what else you got for us, Lonnie? I don't have any questions. Uh, either I'm so good at what explaining what's going on or I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> My guess is I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're thorough. So um, the ways to store these guns, you can store them just like any other gun. Uh, you can put them in. A hard case you can put them in a, a gun sleeve um, I use both I use a, a sleeve I use a hard case for my pistols you know, the way you store them is up to you so but always store your firearms and your ammo separately yes always and the nice thing about it is whereas a brass cartridge round you only have two components black powder you have three or four. And so if you're storing them separately, you got your, your powder and your ball and your primers in one area, your pistols in the other, or you can even split it up into three. Powders in one area, primers are in a third, second area, pistols are in a third. Rate of uh, quick uh, tidbit, rate of fire on a black powder pistol or rifle for civil war is three to four rounds a minute compared to a brass cartridge firearm 
where you can dump 20 rounds in 30 seconds. It's a lot slower. But again, it's more fun if you ask me. All right, Mr. Lonnie, we're at about 45 minutes in. Okay. And nobody's got any questions. I'm not seeing anything at all. So I'm going to share our last slide here. Go for it. Um, let's see. And I'm going to, we'll wrap it up. And then if any questions come in, then we will answer them for the next few minutes. If you have any questions and you just don't want to put them out there right now, you can always contact Lonnie. His contact information is right there. As I always say, everybody's got a cell phone nowadays. Go ahead and take out your cell phone and take a picture of it. If you have any questions about rules or regulations, you can always contact any of the Nevada Department of Wildlife offices and law enforcement would love to answer any questions. You can also find those regulations in the back of the Nevada Big Game Seasons and Application Book, as well as the Big Game Guide. Um, if you have any questions regarding hunter and archery education, you can always reach out to me or if there's any topics that you'd like to see us covered. Not seeing any questions still, but I'd like to thank everyone for attending this evening. And right now, down in that bottom left-hand corner, that's what we're, what we're pushing. Embrace the outdoors and practice responsible recreation. Still not seeing any questions. So on that note... Do you by chance have a slide that shows some of your next upcoming webinars? I do not, but um, where most people find these is on social media, this one. You can also find all of our upcoming webinars on social media, as well as going to our Nevada Department of Wildlife page under the education tab under advanced wildlife ed or advanced hunter ed and angler ed. All of our classes will be listed there. Otherwise, I think that's it. Have a good night, everyone.